I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, though. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Bodybuilding Legends podcast, and I have two very special guests with me today. I have Mr. Tony Pearson, 1978 Mr. America, Mr. Universe, and a great pro bodybuilder during the 1980s. And we have Andrew Menjivar, who is a director, and Andrew just directed a movie about Tony's book, Driven, which came out about four years ago. So I wanted to bring them guys on the show and uh, talk about it. So how are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's yeah. great to see you again, Tony. Thanks for having me. I'm, I don't have nearly as many impressive titles as Tony. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mention your titles, Andrew. You should have told me before. <laughs> <laughs> Long list of titles. <laughs> well, Andrew, let's let's start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about the premiere, because you guys just had a premiere of Tony's movie documentary, Driven, which is based on his book about a month ago. So tell me a little bit about that. How did the premiere go and uh, how did everything go? Yeah. So we premiered Driven, the Tony Pearson story over at the Golden State Film Festival uh, that was hosted over at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. So that wow. was a really, really cool venue to just yeah. kind of have your premiere, uh, see it right there in the in the historic theater. theater. Uh -huh. Um, and, uh, it was, it was great. I think the, the reaction that we got was really, really good. Um, much, much better than, uh, you, cause you, you know, as a filmmaker, you see this cut over and over and over again. And so yeah. you kind of get desensitized to it and you can't think of like, oh, how is the audience going to react to it? Are they going to like it? Mm -hmm. I've seen it so many times that I don't even know if this is good anymore. <laughs> um, but it's, it, it was incredible. Um, there was another documentary, I think one of the testaments to how good the, the movie actually was and the reaction was, was there was another documentary that, uh, was in front of ours that was kind of like a short documentary. Okay. And, uh, there were a couple of people that, that came to support that documentary and they only really planned to watch that documentary and then kind of leave right after, yeah, but as soon as Driven started playing, they just were hooked. They could not mm. leave the theater, and they actually uh, told one of my producers right after that, you know, we were planning on leaving, but the very first few seconds of the documentary kept us hooked, and we stayed wow. all the way to the end. They yeah. had no interest of the, you know, the uh, the topic of bodybuilding or anything like that, but. We were able to hook them and keep them, you know, entertained for like an hour and a half. So wow. uh, I feel like that's a that's a win for us. <laughs> Was this the first time you ever played it in front of an audience? In front of an audience? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, we didn't. This is the first like big public screening. We yeah. had a, another uh, we had a test screening uh, sometime last year. Where okay. we sent it out to a few uh, people uh, just to get their feedback on a, on one of our rough cuts to make sure that we were, you know, telling the story correctly that you know people understood it, uh, because one of the more important things that I wanted out of the documentary was I didn't want just it to just be accessible to uh, people that were very knowledgeable in the sport of bodybuilding. Right, they're gonna get it. They 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 understand it. I want it to capture the people who know nothing about the sport of bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, you know, when I came in to start the documentary, I knew nothing about the sport of bodybuilding. And while that could have been a disadvantage, I kind of positioned myself in a, in a place of advantage. So that way, you know, I was kind of the audience. If I didn't understand something, yeah, the audience was not going to understand it. So I need to find a way to explain it. I need to find a way to, uh, convey this whole uh, idea across. And I think uh, that really helped uh, the the whole documentary kind of be very, very accessible to just everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, probably the most famous movie about bodybuilding ever was Pumping Iron. And it was written by Charles Gaines, who he was a bodybuilder. I mean, he lifted weights. And I'm sure he saw a contest when he was younger. 
but he was really a journalist and everything he wrote about bodybuilding, including the book, which the movie was based off of, was kind of written for the general public. And I always liked reading that because it was it was very it was very great to see how his perspective of it was from an outsider, not someone who's inside the sport, you know. Right. Because I know it can get very technical. I know yeah. even from like my own industry of being in film, there are so many tiny technical terms and things like, <laughs> and you know, I'll know what you're talking about, but somebody outside of film is not right. going to know what you're talking about. So I feel like it's kind of the same way in every kind of industry. It's, yeah, every sport those, or every industry, right? Yeah, there are all these little technical lingo things. And mm -hmm. it's like, it doesn't it doesn't have to be that way to to be accessible yeah um but yeah that the the great foundation for the documentary was really tony's story because i yeah. i i say that in, even in the documentary it's credited that the documentary is based on driven the untold story um now available on amazon please pick it up right now <laughs> it's an incredible story and um you know, it's you don't want to put the book down. Right. Every right. single chapter is an incredible uh, story. And I kind of wanted the documentary to be that very same way where it was, uh, you don't want to put the, the movie down. You don't want to, you know, stop, stop and and and, you know, try to finish it later. Yeah. Uh, you want to yeah. sit down and you want to watch the whole thing in one go. And so it, it's, you know, it, even though I, I know that we created something amazing with this documentary, it all starts at the foundation with, uh, with Tony and Tony's story. Yeah. Tony, what did you think? What was your reaction after seeing the movie? You know, <laughs> this has been a long road writing the book. I know it took a long time and the book was four years ago. So how did you feel now seeing it in a film version? It was really rough. My friend, Anita Tinorino, you know, Dennis Tinorino, yeah. well. good friend of mine too. She was sitting next to me and, um, the tissue started flowing. She said, hand to me because I was like losing wow. it. The first, you know, the first half of it was just, they did such a great job of just, re, you know, taking it from the book. I mean, really from the book. Mm. They pumped it up even more. I mean, it was just really authentic and just raw, brutal. So I'm sitting there going, oh, my God. And then watching myself on the, on the screen. I mean, who sits there and watch themselves? <laughs> right. <laughs> I try to detach from it. So that's not me. It's some other guy. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. but it all, uh, I had to take it all in. An hour and a half, I mean, you just wanted more. I mean, it was like, mm. oh, my God. Wow. These guys really, really went down to Memphis and St. Louis and went into the woods and filmed this and filmed that. Went to George oh, wow. Trump's grave. And I'm talking to George and just really went deep. It's so, you know, you know, afterwards, a couple of guys came over to me and said, hey, we know nothing about bodybuilding, but it's very educational, too. It just hmm. stories incredible, but it was very educational. We learned a lot about the sport, how it works, how it operates, what it is about, because we think you guys just lift weights and flex your muscles. But no, it's a, it's a lot behind it. Sure. Yeah. That's, but like he just said, it's, this is for everybody to watch. This is for everyone who walks. They got issues. And we put a lot on that movie screen about ups and downs and roller coaster rides and survival, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't say enough how well they put this together. It was just shocking for me. That said, man, they really read that book 100 times old. <laughs> yeah. On point. Yeah. <laughs> it's on point. It's very, very tough to watch. And so, like I said, I was wiping the tears away the whole time. So, <laughs> Well, your story was, was so traumatic. And then it was so inspirational to everybody after we read it. Like, I've known about you, Tony, all my life, reading about you as a bodybuilder since, I mean, since you won that America in 1978 when I was a teenager. And I never knew you went through all this stuff. And I, I picked up the book today because it's been a few years since it came out. And I was just going through it. And with, before I knew it, like Andrew said, I read 50 pages. In like a half hour, you know, it's like it just couldn't right. stop turning it, turning the pages. Yeah. You know? One right, of the great right. testaments of that book, it literally feels like it, like every chapter is like written almost like a movie. To me, yeah. I, yeah. I see a movie playing out every single time. So when we went and we, uh, you know, we didn't get to do every single detail from the book for the documentary because of time. Yeah. But it, there are some highlights that we had to pick out and you know, it was just, we do have some 
really dramatic recreations of some of these scenes from the book in the in the documentary. Mm -hmm. So just like Tony said, that that beginning part of this movie, you know, the opening, how Tony grew up, it's a dark it's a dark part of the movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a very tough, dark part of the movie. But I think it's and sometimes at some points it's even uncomfortable to watch. But it's it's, very, it's very uncomfortable to watch. But I feel like it's it's something that you have to kind of like trudge through mm-hmm. to try to it pays off in the end, you know. Get this, the impact. Yeah. Yeah. So Andrew, how did you uh become aware of the book and what made you came up with the idea to to do a documentary about it? So I was connected to Tony through a mutual friend, um, Stephen Cartwright out in uh, Vegas. And um, I guess, Tony, you were training Cartwright at the time, right? Yes, I was training Cartwright. And um, I don't know how this happened. Of course, Eric, you know, you got to mention yeah. Eric. So, uh, um, and, yeah, and and so, uh, Tony, I guess you mentioned your book to Cartwright and you say that you need like an audio book version of it. And he knew yes. us. So we're like, oh, yeah, we we can produce an audio book version for you. And I think, OK maybe we should actually like buy the book and read what we're actually getting into to make sure that we're, <laughs> we're, we're doing something good here. Um, and you know, just like you, it was like, I couldn't put the book down. This was an incredible story. And before we even finish the audio book, I catch wind that Tony is going to go on stage for the very last time his oh, yeah. before retirement. Um, and this is about like two days uh, before his, uh, uh, he goes on stage and I'm oh, thinking, wow. <laughs> okay, uh, let's gather up the, the film equipment. Let's get the audio equipment. I'm loading it up into the car. Let's book a hotel. All right. I'm off to Vegas to, to film this. And I don't know what I'm going to do with the footage. I don't know where, mm. where it's going to go, but I feel like this is important. And I got to capture the moment. So wow. I went out to Vegas, uh, on a whim, captured tony's final uh final stage performance <laughs> and uh i actually put together like a small i think like a 10 12 minute concept documentary of what okay. this could be presented it to tony and tony loved it and we were off to the races we were gonna make the full-fledged thing what year was that what, what was your last contest tony what year was that 2020 2020 okay november yeah i was here in vegas and I, and that's why i competed because i was at home and i have to travel and you know yeah yeah but once again what they did in the movie they really built it up the, the guy's retiring he's injured he's beat up he's beat down <laughs> how is he going to pull this thing off you know <laughs> and just the way they worked is like a heavyweight fight coming out of retirement the last time <laughs> yeah i mean and this is true it's amazing it's how they just put it together. It's like, and I could see the pain in my face. I said, I, you know, I couldn't even flex my arm because I, I had a pinched nerve in my neck as I'm training. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Like, hmm. I was a mess. And I was starving to death. I had no food. I quit twice. I can't do it. I said, I can't do it. This is it. Yeah. And I looked in the mirror and, and said to myself, you have never quit. So you're not quitting now. Yeah. So that, this that is a preview for the movie, going. right? by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember you told me, Tony, that after that show, you said, that's it. I'm never doing another one. <laughs> no, no it, it destroyed me. Right. But it looks really good on film. And they did such a good job at cutting, slicing, spicing, putting it together. Yeah. In the yeah. yeah so so what, what's, your, what's your background in film, Andrew? How many uh, have you how many films have you done before this? So I have done. Uh, well, this is something that I've been doing for uh, many 10, uh, 12 plus years now. Okay. Um. And but this is actually my very first feature film, so something that's over an hour and a half long. Yeah. Um. Up until this point, it's been kind of like either working on other people's films or you know doing short films here and there. Yeah. Um. But I've been doing this for quite a while, and um. And so for this first feature, I decided to go you know big. Started to do things that I was I didn't do before, like I technically knew how to do it but i never really attempted to do it because it was just it was like uh, such a massive kind of a workflow or undertaking uh, without getting too into like the technical details Mm -hmm. of things um and i probably made probably made this whole process a little bit harder than it should have been but (laughs) i kind of wanted to 
<laughs> I kind of wanted to to do it. I feel like that's maybe the artist curse. Maybe the bodybuilders do it as well, where it's like, you know, I know how to do this. I know how to achieve this. But here's another technique that I've never done before, and I kind of want to do it. So I think I'm going to do that. And it's way harder than what you normally do. And mm -hmm. by, <laughs> and by the end of it, you're like, well, why did I even do this? But I'm too deep <laughs> into it, so I can't stop. So yeah, <laughs> yeah you're into it. So how does, I, I don't know how that works when you decide to make a film. Do you have to get financial backing? Do you need producers to get the finances together? And then you go, because it's not like you just read the book and said, let's go to Vegas and let's get this thing started on a whim almost. So, yeah, the that first day, that first um, uh, pre, that first shoot with Tony and his uh, retirement uh, contest, that was all kind of like out of pocket. Uh -huh. Um and uh, again it was kind of like on a whim I just felt like there was we needed the footage I don't know what we were going to do with it but I felt okay. like it was important to just document it um and maybe that's kind of like the more artsy creative in me where it's like it's not about the money it's about documenting the the important thing at this moment yeah um and uh so yeah when we started to do the the bigger uh, feature, of course, we had to put, you know, the the contracts in place and all that kind of stuff. And okay. then we had to start uh, building up the funding for things. So uh, luckily, uh, we actually had a an, an incredible angel donation to the project very early on. Mm. It came from uh, one of Tony's clients that wow. That's um, awesome. I'm not even sure. Uh, that I even know a name, but I think they just wanted it to be completely anonymous. And yeah. but they they donated a huge chunk of uh of the budget to help us at least get started, and that really really helped us uh you know get out to Memphis and St. Louis and do a lot of that traveling that we needed to do, um as well as it even took us a little bit into some of the post production elements that we needed like sound mixing. Because mm. again, I, I didn't want to go small on this on this one. I wanted a full five point one surround sound mix, so it sounds wow. nice and big in the theater. Uh, I didn't want us to go, you know, small with anything. Um, okay. So yeah, it it really I feel I feel like we were kind of lucky at the very beginning, um, having that donation of money, yes. um, and then eventually halfway <laughs> through, because you don't have to get all of the money at, in one go. You can right. just start the your journey and then halfway through kind of pick up some more uh either through this avenue or you know i had a lot of uh people in my network that you know have seen my work and they believe in what i do uh -huh. and donated little bits of money here and there so okay uh, it it's kind of been uh you know not just a big chunk but kind of like small things and big chunks and you know everything just to to get to the finish line okay so, Tony, now I know, like, your aunt, who was in the beginning of the book, she passed away. So how were you able to recreate that? Did you just kind of tell the story? We tell the story. Did we talk about my aunt passing? We did not. We just kept focused on me. Okay. Because you could... Well, you went through. Showing, this is what they did really, really well. They kept showing pictures of my aunt. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Face, you know, maybe two or three times, separate, separate, different times. I said, that's really, really good because it really, you get to see this person's face. Yeah. Because I'm kind of narrating the whole thing. I'm talking the whole time. And to visualize it, yeah. Right. So that's what really brought her into the picture. So okay. We didn't go down, you know, how she passed away and this and that. And we just can't yeah. really focus on on me, me, me. I hate to say it, but that's Yeah, how. yeah. I mean, it's a Tony Pearson story, so we got to. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like. The important part with because we only had there's only one picture that exists of Auntie Betty. There's only there's, one picture, and he kept repeating that picture. But it but it worked really well. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like really because well. of the context of which we saw her, at sometimes you saw her and she was evil, and sometimes you saw her she was a motivating force. Sometimes mm. you saw her and you you felt sorry. So it, it it was really mm. strange that you know you could take all of these emotions and From it's the picture. same picture, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you, you get all of these different feelings every That's single crazy. time you see it. Yeah, yeah. So then I imagine that you guys went into the trip to California and how you got started there and all the hardships you went through being homeless when you moved to California and all that. 
Yes, yes. We went to down to you know Muscle Beach, of course, where it all started. And okay, and I'm standing at the at, at on Venice Beach, looking into the ocean and the sunset, and like you see, my mind my mind is turning, and, and then there, I'm, I'm narrating what's happening, what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, how tough it was to survive in California. I think down south is tough. It's yeah, like, it's brutal <laughs> once I got to L.A. too. You know, yeah. you know I'm a 19 yeah. year old kid, naive, right? Homeless, you know, yeah. <laughs> You just survive one day at a time. That's all. Yeah. I think what you did well, was absolutely crazy, Tony. You came to, to California, $75 in your pocket, no support line. Absolutely. Didn't know no, anybody out there. No, right. Nothing or no one. It was literally right. one way ticket because I said, I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> and you were like 18, right, Tony? I was 19. Yeah. 19, and I said, yeah. I'm not coming back. This is it. Wow. And then to see what my sister was crying because of the leaving St. Louis and please don't go begging me not to go. And yeah, I, go, yeah. I have to go. I go, I can feel there's an urgency for me to get there now. Mm. And, mm. I, and I got to get on the next bus out of here. So yeah, it's a Greyhound bus and here we go. <laughs> and we've heard so many stories about bodybuilders who did that, especially I think more so back in the day, right? In the seventies and eighties. Yes, was, a lot that of was the Mecca there. and everybody had to go out there and try it. But these guys had a car. They could sleep in their car. I had right, nothing. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I remember Cal Scalac. He was one of them, and yeah, he had a van, they, and he used to sleep in his van on the street. You know, but you, Grimkowski too. It, it, yeah, you know. yeah. So they was like living the high life, and like they had a car. You know, they could drive. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> did you hook up? Did you did you interview a lot of the bodybuilders who were, uh, you know, in your life back then when you first moved to California? Yes, we did. Uh, Quite a few. Uh, okay. Yeah. Dobbins and John Bailey. Um, who else did we interview? A lot of people. Uh, and they knew me from day one because I remember Bill Dobbins says, man, I saw you walking in the park one day. And the closer I got, he says, I thought you was Robbie Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. I got to realize it was you. So in other words, you you put on some muscle and you grew. He, was, he always brought that up to me. So yeah. they, they knew me from day one. You know, I was a very right. shy, quiet kid. I'd sit in the corner. I didn't talk because I didn't know how to communicate. So yeah. I sit in the corner and um, I just worked out hard. That that part I did do. But yeah, well, they knew me from day one. This when everyone said we have never heard this story before. You in the magazine, you did you know competing, but we never heard this story. Right. Only for forty years or more. So yeah, right, right, right. What did you find out about uh, bodybuilding, Andrew, as you, as you started to get into this? You know, because you didn't know anything about the sport beforehand. I didn't know anything about the sport. Um, I remember texting uh, Tony at the very start going, hey, can we do like weekly phone calls? Because I feel like I, I have a lot to learn right. um, <laughs> about the sport. And the crash the course. <laughs> like I, I have to do my homework. I can't yeah. just do, go into this and just like not do my homework. Um, but one of the things that I kind of, um, picked up was how similar, uh, you know, me as like my, I guess my own personality, my own creativeness, um, is very similar to the mindset of like a bodybuilder and being hmm. very motivated. Um, there's, you know, it, cause it's like, I feel like if you're a filmmaker, you have to be one of two people. You either have to be absolutely insane <laughs> or you have to absolutely love it because you're you're going to hate yourself either way. And I feel like it's the same thing with bodybuilding. You yeah. have to absolutely want this or you're going to quit. You're not going to want to do it. Um, and so I felt I, I felt like I saw a lot of myself in Tony of like pushing myself i'm not good enough what can i do to be better and yeah it was always this push to try to get better which uh you know i felt like that's that was kind of like the unifying uh feeling that i felt like i could actually connect with everybody um on on a universal level mm -hmm. so you didn't have to be into bodybuilding um you could sit down watch this movie and realize oh shoot you know, me as a filmmaker, I'm kind of like Tony because I'm constantly pushing myself to be better, to yes. to want to get to a point where I am the absolute best. Yeah. So I feel like um, I, I picked up a lot of the, the mindset of uh, being a bi bodybuilder is very, very similar to the, the mindset that I have. But in terms of like 
creating uh, different media and different uh, film projects. Yeah, we're both we're both artists, right? Bodybuilders and filmmakers are artists and we're creative. You have to be creative. I mean, we're, bodybuilders are creative in building their bodies and you're obviously creative in putting together a film project and how you're going to do that. That is correct. That's the some the the same thing that that Tony kept going back to is, you know, your body is a work of art. Um, yeah, this whole yeah. thing is it's art. It's the from the posing to the way that the muscles are sculpted. Yeah. It's uh it's all art. Yeah. Tony, when you look back at your uh, career, especially like moving to California and getting started and then is, isn't it crazy now looking back at that and, and realizing the mindset you had? Because I always sometimes I think about that because I think we were all like that when we were younger. We trained so hard with reckless abandon, you know, and we just were so into it. You have to do this. It's like do or die. And you wonder now if I always think about if I go back, if I could go back in time magically like 40 years would I still have that same drive knowing what I know now, you know, because you push yourself so hard when you're young like that, you know? That's true. Yeah. I look back on those, those days and go, but I was enjoying every minute of it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. For, you, you train twice a day and, and you push yourself and this is almost seven days a week. I mean, there's no, there's no off season. Yeah. I never had an off season. It, it was all year long because you train for a competition or exhibition and yeah. When you show up, they expect you to look like you do in the magazine. Mm -hmm. This is what they're expecting. This is what they're paying you for. So yeah. I make sure I show up in, you know, top condition. And then I said, I don't want the competitors to look better than me. So <laughs> I got to really show up in shape. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would do the same thing all over again. I know it sounds crazy, but I know. You train until you drop on the floor and throw up or whatever happens. Who cares? <laughs> you well, just keep well, going. coming from the background you came from too it had to feel like being in heaven right being in california even though it was rough yes. and you were homeless yes. you, you know, know almost two thousand miles away i got i escaped part of it was escaping yeah and then i'm building my body in the gym i fell in love with the gym back in st louis yeah so that was, that was my happy place to go to the gym yeah you know you know i trained with robbie and all these crazy these guys they push you to the limit i mean they're trying to kill you yeah, and I understood why they was trying to kill you because they're trying to make a living themselves. So mm -hmm. <laughs> this is their mm -hmm. job. Yeah. So if you want to play with Robert, Bill Grant, and Kent Keen, all these guys, you better keep up. <laughs> right. You're going to be out next. Come you know, next training partner comes in. So, but like I said, I was enjoying every second of it. I was loving it. And then and the I would go back and do it all over again if I had to. Yeah. <laughs> the foundation was George Turner, like you said. So did you cover that in the, in the film also? Yes, we did. Yes. Yes. Yep, yep. We definitely did. And you know, the crazy part was I feel like that was probably one of the hardest things to uh actually cover in the documentary because there's there's very little media out there on uh George Turner in terms of like photos and of yeah, video. Yeah. It's true. Um I it's almost like he was this mythical figure that <laughs> right. you know, you can't find anything on him. Um, and luckily, I we were able to to scrounge out a few things here and there. Um, but we were able to really paint a picture of George Turner from uh, from Cliff Coons, who uh, yeah. oh, okay. sat yeah. down with us, and he did a fantastic uh, you know, he, job. <laughs> he worked, uh, you know, with George uh, in the gym for like over twenty years, I believe. Yeah. and you know, he he just had some fantastic stories and then we also sat down with phil williams who also okay. told us some some great stories not all of those stories maybe maybe it's like a bonus feature that we put together uh <laughs> that we put together all these stories that didn't make the cut but there were some yeah. funny stories that uh, <laughs> no. i heard of george turner oh yeah yeah i've had uh i've had tony and phil on before just doing a whole show about george turner stories you know yeah hmm. he's a character but you know George was, you know, getting me ready for California. He yeah. first he wanted to see if I had what it takes. Mm -hmm. you know, he's ex marine. You want to train with me? I'll show you. So yeah, I'm 19 years old, and he, he really Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. I'm doing legs, squats, ten sets of ten. <laughs> and George sent in counting the reps for you. Yeah. Well, you never say, George, I can't do this. I'm too tired, or I'm too sore. Because you knew at that moment, that's the, that's the moment he's going to throw you out the gym. Yeah, yeah. I kept my mouth shut. Whatever George said, told me to do, I did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, was was, uh... he was testing to see if I had mentally or, you know, the heart to do this. Bodybuilding is not easy. Right. 
So yeah, I think he yeah. saw that part. So when I got to California, I was I was conditioned already. I was ready for yeah. battle. Yeah. And I, I, I believe it was uh Cliff Coons in the movie who actually said, you know, George, he either he he made you or he broke you. And if he yes. made you, he made you great. Hmm. Yeah. And I'm, I'm assuming you talked about the part where Arnold discovered you on uh, Venice Beach. We didn't talk about that part. Oh, really? Okay. So, yeah, no, because we, we, went, over, so we much... went over it very, very briefly. Okay. But the story is so much about the story of me and the childhood and yeah, coming to California. So, yeah, not too much because talking about Arnold discovering me on Muscle Beach would have been great, but it's not really the core Okay. What I was going through what I was living through, you know, just survival. Yeah. Okay. So, it's more of a jumping grateful. off point in the in the movie of mm -hmm. like, okay, Arnold discovers Tony, and then that kind of jumps us into a different bridge, um, eventually leading us to the uh the Mr. America. Okay. Okay. And you talked a lot about that. A lot. We did that yeah. was a major, major point in the yeah. movie is the 1978 Mr. What did American. you think about that, Andrew, when you found out all about all that controversy and what happened with that show? I thought, oh my gosh, we probably have <laughs> the greatest year for Mr. America because it's so there's so much controversy, there's so much drama. Let's see what what is the story here. Somebody from coming from the outside, what is uh, the actual story here? here? Because just like Bill Dobbins said, it's like a it's a comparison on stage. Um, yeah. It's and so it's like it's very it's very much somebody's personal opinion whether somebody is a yes. better uh, bodybuilder than the other. Um, and so I I just needed to see what was the big hubbub, and I think that is one of the best parts of the documentary is when mm. we begin to set up for the Mister America, um, and we really take our time and we really make that the big dramatic moment from the very start of the movie you start to realize that we were setting up the entire movie just for this one moment here with oh really America. yeah yeah and uh it's i think uh we actually stumbled upon our our take on mr america is actually a little bit different than how everybody else has been uh kind of approached it from you know online forums or you know facebook groups and, and comments and things i feel like we approached it from a different perspective than everyone else kind of did you know everyone's very kind of split down the middle yeah um i think we actually put you in the seat in the audience of mr america and mm -hmm. actually had you experience the whole show yourself mm. and uh, made you feel uh like exactly why this is why bodybuilding is so exciting when you go to a show, you know, for somebody that <laughs> has never been to a bodybuilding show, sit down in this seat. You're going to see why this is such an exciting topic. Yeah. Um, I actually prepared a clip here for from okay. the movie. If you guys actually wanted to watch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would love to. <laughs> okay. Give me one second. Okay. And I'm going to have it right here on the screen. We won't okay, have to awesome. anything here. Awesome. 1978, I won Junior Mr. USA. I won it. And then I won Junior Mr. America. So I won both shows. He won it at 20. Tony did. That's a big title. That's right under the Mr. America. I had training partners. We trained like there's no tomorrow. People used to tell me, we saw you at the gym. We wouldn't come near you. <laughs> because your face said don't. <laughs> the term bodybuilding can mean a lot of things. There is certainly the technique of bodybuilding, the system of bodybuilding. But competition bodybuilding is about how to create a certain look which manifests itself on stage when you compete, what you look like the day before, what you look like the day after. Is not relevant because bodybuilders are not judged on their own. They're judged in comparison. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Thank you guys you. got audio for that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got it. It was great. Okay, cool. I didn't yeah. hear audio on my end. <laughs> awesome. 
So yeah, that sequence right there was all building up for uh, the Mr. America. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. What so, was the part that resonated, you think, most with the audiences when you guys screened it for the film festival? Oh, Tony, you wanna you wanna take that one first? Um, I'm curious of your answer. Oh boy. Um, well, I'll tell you what happened when the final three was standing on stage and announced and make made an announcement, you know, and they, they call my name first. Uh, I I said, oh, I got third place. Mm. Okay, once again, I'm naive, naive and it's exhausted, yeah. battling all day. And I said, oh, I'm third. And then I realized that Ron Tufel was having a fit to my left, yeah. storming, screaming, yelling. Yeah. And Angie Perry to my right, looking down at me like this. Yeah. And then I looked, my eyes were popped open. I, I won. <laughs> I won. And everyone in the audience applauded. Then I stood up and applauded as they're watching out. And I said, whoa. <laughs> so it, it, he built it up to that moment. It's like, it's going to explode. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It was really, that was a good moment. That was a very, very, very intense moment. But yeah. then I thought, oh. okay, they are in my corner. They are backing me. They're following me through this thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to say it's pretty much that, that same moment that Tony was talking <laughs> about because uh, we put together that sequence for Mr. America I want to say probably a year ago. So over a year and some change, I've been sitting on that sequence, not showing anybody what it mm. is. Wow. I always had this fantasy in my head that when we saw it, because I could feel it when we first cut that whole thing together that, you know, oh, it'd be so cool if the audience just kind of like started applauding when when the whole thing was done, because it felt like you went through the whole competition with them. Mm. It felt like you were a part of the audience. It felt like this was a moment that you were going to want to start cheering in the audience. Of course, that was just a fantasy in my head. And then we premiere the movie and all of a sudden we get to that moment in the movie and you hear applause in the audience. Oh, uh. <laughs> we're not even finished with the whole movie and I'm right, hearing applause. Right. And so I'm like, OK, I think I think we got it. I think yeah. this is it. That's awesome. That's got to feel so gratifying as a filmmaker to uh, put together a movie and get that kind of response from the audience. It made it was very validating. It was very yeah. validating that, you know, all of the emotions that I didn't know if people were going to pick up or if they were going to get it the way that they were. Mm -hmm. It made me feel at that moment. It was like, OK, yes, everybody from the very start felt sad when Tony was sad. They laughed with Tony. They cried with Tony. All of the emotions that we try to hit, they were feeling it. Yeah, yeah. It's cool, too, for uh, people who are kind of new to bodybuilding, Tony, that never knew about that contest, you know, because I'm sure a lot of younger people don't have any idea what happened to 1978 Mr. America because it was so long ago, you know. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Very sure about that. This will be a good history lesson for them, you know, they don't realize it. And that was a really exciting contest. You know, I remember there was a lot of talk about that show. It wasn't a boring show. It wasn't, you know, that was a, a, a show that was talked about all year. Right, while well, still talking about yeah, <laughs> talking yeah, about right, show. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like again, this is a perspective that I feel like people haven't really approached it from of why I think Tony was probably deserving of this mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. America title. Yeah, I think part of the the applause too because they they start following me through as a child to winning the Mr. America. So it's like this found this kid finally did something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like building up from all the childhood to hold. It's like they know me already. And then he finally did it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, more, I did like the prediction of when I won Mr. Venice Beach, I did say, you know, in two years from now, I'm going to be Mr. America. <laughs> That's awesome. At 19 years old. So everyone's laughing at me. Goes, yeah, sure. Yeah. You just won Mr. Venice Beach. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> but, but when I did it, you know, that was a part of the, of the scene, too. He actually did it. <laughs> And it's amazing, too, you did it two years after coming to California. You know, you came to California in 19, and at 21, you were Mr. America. That's unbelievable rise to fame. It's crazy. And for those that aren't uh, into bodybuilding, I want to equate that. So it's kind of like making your first short film and then saying, the next time I do this, it's going to be a feature film, and it's going <laughs> to win an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the kind of like yeah. level. 
Yeah. The leap. That's the big right. leap there. Yeah. Speaking of an awards, uh, you guys did win an award, right? At the film festival. Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. we did. Sorry that was that. a a great surprise. Um, so we won the uh it's called the grand prize for the best feature documentary at the the golden state film festival okay so of all the documentaries that were at that festival we're at the top we're all the right we're <laughs> awesome. mr mr america yeah yeah <laughs> did they present those awards at the end of the film festival Yes. So um, the festival ended on a on a Friday. It went on for like a whole week. OK. Um, and so they had an award ceremony. Uh, Tony I, had already flown back to Vegas. I had actually begun my own vacation going out to Portland just to, you know, finally have a, a moment to relax. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it's so it was uh, my producer, Cameron Mitchell, that actually attended the award ceremony texted me at night and was like hey guess what you're an award winner now and I'm like, oh okay wow. sweet <laughs> and i instantly call up tony and tell him the good news wow that's amazing so it was uh over two years then right andrew the whole project because if you started in, in 2020 we started november of 2020 um, yeah and yeah it went all the way through Oh my gosh! I want to say even up to a few weeks before we actually premiered. Oh really? We were still wow. tweaking, doing final little touches, making sure that things were good here and there. Yeah. Um. So yeah, all the way up until like February 2023, we oh were still working on this thing. Amazing. That's wild. So Andrew and I, we would talk like every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Update what's going on, where are we, and so that went on for two years as well. Yeah. Follow That's up. true, because I didn't want to. Uh, well, first, I wanted to do my due diligence and, you know, actually learn about the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, learn about Tony, learn about his family, learn about, uh, you know, where he came from, all that kind of uh, stuff. Uh, but also to to make sure that, you know, there was a little there was some trust there between us, because at the very start of this movie, we do go into some really deep topics into some really deep and dark uh areas of the mind mm -hmm. and that's that's very hard to just be vulnerable on camera on uh, doing that you know mm -hmm. to just express yourself you know i feel like it's a very it's it's a defense to you know if there's a camera there you want to look your best you want to look amazing and yeah of course we're in this moment where it's like you need to let your guard down just for a moment, mm -hmm. but you're not going to do that if you don't trust the the person and you're, you don't trust right. that they're going to be able to tell that story. Right. And so, um, you know, the, those phone calls were also to, to make sure that, you know, we were, that I, Tony could actually trust me to tell mm -hmm. the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that's true because when I was you know narrating and I would, I would just think about Andrew. I'm talking to Andrew, and this is what happened. No mm -hmm. one else is in the room, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I totally trusted him, and so yeah, I think and, I did oh a my, pretty good job at ad living. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh! If I had to, if Tony, if you weren't a bodybuilder, I would say you have to be an actor because you are. <laughs> you translate so well on camera. Wow. You know, you you Thank put you. a camera on somebody, they you know become somebody else. They put on a facade or they shut down. But you, you like, I see you on the screen and I'm like, I see the emotion. I see every little bit of detail. Um, you're not holding back. And it, it comes across that you are not holding back. You're not faking anything. You're not putting on a show. Yeah. Uh, and I, I kept telling Tony this over the phone when we were, uh, when we were uh, having those meetings that it feels like a movie when we were shooting it. It's like a weird hybrid of, it's a documentary, it's real life, but you look at it and it looks like a movie. It kind of plays out like a movie that was scripted, but it wasn't scripted. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that's also because Tony translates so well on camera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I, I mean, watching it for an hour and a half, at the end of it, to me, I go, it, it was just like I just watched a movie. <laughs> I, I didn't think documentary in my head at all. It's like it's like a real movie. Yeah, that's the feeling that I had at the very end. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's some dramatic moments. There's some very dramatic imagery that we see in the in the documentary. Uh, the very first one that comes to mind is is Tony going back to the cotton fields in mm. Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's a weird, strange kind of juxtaposition because, uh, you know, Tony in the book, you're a little kid in the cotton fields and in the in the documentary, you're all grown up and the cotton fields are like still kind of baby cotton plants. Oh, yeah. So it's a weird kind of switch in dynamic uh, for for that. But I felt like it worked really well and it played so well into the a lot of the dramatic uh, imagery um there's another great one when you visit george turner's uh grave site and um it looks like it's rainy it looks like it's stormy uh it's very overcast uh let me tell you filming that whole scene everything in st louis really sucked because it was so humid and hot mm -hmm. and so it was just you know sweating my clothes are sticking to me it was just kind of gross but the imagery that we captured yeah made it look like it was very cold and very uh overcast yeah. kind of rainy oh, okay. so it kind of fit the vibe that's a little yeah. bit of movie magic there right, it, right. it looks like it's it's rainy and cold but it was really hot and sticky and it was yeah great. yeah <laughs> great where does the film go from after tony wins the america where do you guys go with that do you do you uh, capture a lot of your success in your bodybuilding career, Tony, and then kind of go back to the beginnings? How did how did you guys do that? Yeah, because yeah, they they talked about me winning, winning Mister Universe in London, and yeah, they it was like flash up on the screen, right? We talked about that a little bit more in okay. my career. We just yeah, so started. so from Mister America, we actually go right into the controversy. We actually start to address some of the controversy um, that surrounds the whole contest. Yeah. And uh, from that moment, it actually goes from, you know, I don't want to give too much away here, but it goes from Tony on a high to back down to zero again. Right. And so we have to build up Tony again to, to finally get us uh, moving. How did Tony move on from that? How did he right. uh, continue and persevere through and, Eventually, we, uh, you know, we get to Mr. Universe and finally we land in, in the, the final spot of the journey back to Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an amazing because you went from this terrible childhood, you know, abusive childhood. You got out of there. You go to California. You make it in two years. You win Mr. America and then you make your dream happen. And then it all falls apart again, you know, because of all the right. controversy and the, yeah. and the politics yeah. and all the other stuff, you know. Yes, I, yeah. I went very downhill after that. So it was yeah. hard to come back after that. It was hard yeah. to get up off the ground again. You know, right? And as and as young bodybuilders, we're taught that if you win something like Mister America or Mister Universe, you, it's the you know everything's taken care of after that. You know, it's the golden road. You know, it's you're, you're done. You've achieved yeah. your goal, but it wasn't like that with you. You know, you, you went right. through the the politics and the bullshit of bodybuilding too. I went homeless again. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's amazing. Amazing. But once again, you fight your way back, which I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, a good, that's a good thing about the story. It's an inspirational story for people to, they go Absolutely. through a lot of things in their lives, not just in, but in, in a normal life. Yeah. And that you can survive if you believe in yourself and you fight hard enough. Yeah. And just, just keep saying, I'm never going to quit. I'm not going to go away and I'm not going to quit. So, yeah you'll eventually you're going to win in the end so it's a lot yeah of i remember the the first time we talked about the book tony you said that a lot of people in your position would have taken a negative route they would have went through drugs alcohol yeah. something like that yeah. you know, feeling sorry for themselves and you just kept pushing and and went in a positive you know a positive outlet which was bodybuilding and working out building your body becoming a champion right and able to share the story with everybody what i took for all the negativity that I was getting Imagine you're 21 years old, you pick up a magazine that says this is the worst article you're ever going to read about yourself. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of those. But I just you said, said, thank you. This is motivation for me. I will show you. Yeah. But I never talked about it. I just did the work. No, you never talked about it. That's amazing. And I was always tight-lipped. Just do yeah. the work and show up. Yeah. And just and never quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. If you quit, you lost. Right, right. 
So Andrew, what's what's the uh, plan with the movie now? I'm, after you've done this film festival, do you do other film festivals? Uh, do you try to get it on streaming services? What what's the path with a documentary like this? Yeah. So uh, right now we have submitted to a few other film festivals. Okay. Um, right now the we get to hear back from Tribeca uh, next month to see if uh, Driven is going to play over at that festival. Okay. Uh, we do have a few more throughout the year. Um, we're going to do a couple of special screenings. Hopefully we can do one down at, uh, at USC at Chapman university to okay. try to keep uh, kind of these local screenings going. Yeah. Um, but as of right now, we are talking to a few distributor distributors on where you know we can land this movie um so yeah. hopefully within the next week week and a half or so we might fingers crossed sign a deal and Ooh, get this right. movie out somewhere on on a netflix on a hulu on something yeah um i can't say too much because nothing is set in stone yet so right. all i can sure. really say is driven will be streaming somewhere this year for sure Okay. Will it, will it, any chance it'll be released in the theaters also? Um, that, depends that, on is, the streaming service. that depends on our distributor and yeah. the deal that they want to, they want to go with because they, they can actually go ahead and put the, the movie in a theater for a, a limited run as well. Okay. Yeah. I hope they do that. Tribeca is in the spring, right? And that's in New York. So it's in the summer. Um, <laughs> in the it's summer. in New okay. York. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. And this year it's going to be in June. All right. That'd be great if you can get there, because I know that gets a lot of uh, publicity, a lot of uh, attention, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That'd be amazing to bring um, Tony's story. And again, I want to try to capture the audience that doesn't know that they want to hear this story. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the biggest thing, because it's like people that know Tony, they're going to want to see this movie regardless. And yeah. uh, they are into bodybuilding you absolutely need to see this is almost like a textbook movie that you gotta you gotta watch yeah um but it's the person that doesn't know that they needed this movie like yeah me or uh somebody that needs a little bit of motivation they can sit down they can watch this movie and they can realize well you know all those things that tony went through i can apply that to my own life i can stay motivated i can stay driven Mm -hmm. And I can make it and persevere through through it all, really, because Tony's story is absolutely incredible. I feel like, you know, I, I wrote my director statement on this whole on this whole uh, documentary. And I said, you know, Tony, quite literally from the very first day, was not wanted. Nobody asked for Tony. Nobody wanted Tony. And yet. He still persevered. He still went through. He won no matter what. And whether he's gotten the big champion awards or not, he's won at life. Yeah. And yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a huge thing. You know, I feel like in, in a land of like opportunity that America is known for, Tony truly has earned the title. Yeah. Mr. America. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well said. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> and Tony, that's why you wrote the book in the first place, right? To to show your story and to inspire people. Yes, to inspire people. But, you know, for the first, the whole life, I said, I'm never going to tell the story. Yeah. And I got to California and said, no one's going to know what happened in my past. That, yeah. You know? Yeah. So no one, no, no one knew. And then one day uh, I had lunch with a client and I was, you know, telling her my story. And she's listening to me. She goes, you need to be writing that. Mm -hmm. and that's the day I start writing really wow yeah so I remember I was in Holland and I had some friends you know I know a lot of people in Holland and uh, I mentioned that I worked I was in a cotton field and they started laughing at me so right, right away I go I would never tell this story now for sure I would never tell this story yeah right <laughs> so I come home and I write this write this book so yeah it was just because it was such embarrassing it was, it was shameful it was just and then people see me from a different light. Mm -hmm. Articles about me, Tony Pierce, and this, this, and this. And I go, I could never let this, you know, tell the story. So yeah, she inspired me. She said, "You need to be writing this." 
and I just start writing. And it was it was when I was writing this, it was coming to me so fast that I couldn't get it on the paper fast enough. Oh wow, it. really? And I yeah. and I go, this is not me, because there are some points there where I was set to sit and think, what am I going to write? What am I going to say? That's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when it was coming to me so fast, I couldn't get it on the paper. I knew there's a high, higher power is writing this thing for me. Wow. And even now, when I go back and pick up the book, I'll skim through it. I go, did I write this? <laughs> Seriously. I well, go, did I really write that? <laughs> how long did it take you to write the book, Tony? It, it took about a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. What I was relentless, once again, the, you know, the bodybuilder attitude. I would get up at 7 a.m., start writing without breakfast. I had clients all day. I had to train twice a day. I was getting ready for a show, but I was still writing. Mm. <laughs> so, it, so it, 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 2009, 2019, it put me into the uh, into the hospital. I had to go to the, yeah, the four in the morning. It, it took me out. Why? So, stress, 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 stress. Really? Stress. Wow. You train for a show, train twice a day, and you starve, you got yeah. tired. Yeah. You know, you're just, you're not there anymore. Right. Eating right. salt so, yeah. out of the box. Yeah, it really took me down. Mm. But I said, I said, I'm not going to quit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this book. I had, you know, I had a couple of people to proofread it. They didn't find the mistakes. I, and then I had a ghostwriter to help me in the beginning, but she was British. So now I sound British. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go, this is not going to work. So, at the end of the day, I got this book in my hand, and I go, I can't publish this. This is impossible. They're going to go, he's not British. <laughs> all the misspellings <laughs> and all the mistakes. So I went through this book like he, he watched it a thousand times watching it. I went through this book like a hundred times, over mm. and over, every word, over. This is what I want to say. I kind of, what he said was, I try to write this like a movie. I try to put you in that room. Yeah. Or, well, that emotions in that room, in that place, wherever you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So you are actually there. I'm trying to want. I want you to be there. So, yeah, it's it's. Um, now I look back. Go, thank God I wrote the book. Yeah, yeah. You know the sad thing when I was writing it, the the, the the pain I was going through, I would cry when I was coming home because I knew I had to write this stuff. Mm, okay. And the more you write, the more things you remember. Oh my God. Yeah. That happens too. Yeah. You, keep, you know, it keeps, <laughs> you unlock the door. Yeah. Yeah. Because most people lock the door and throw away the key. So yeah. That's true. I unlock the door. So here, yeah. But on the titles, I'm like, oh, I get to go home right about the women's universe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the fun part. So it was a very emotional for me yeah. to write that. So and when then, you started, when you started writing, you didn't have a publisher. Is This was just a personal project. And then at, that all came afterwards, right? Yes, yes. Okay. It's it's on Amazon, but it's self self published. I don't have self published. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you can get it from Amazon. So yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. that's an amazing journey that you know you wanted to self tell the story just out of the blue one day, and you started writing, and then Andrew yeah. came along and and picked it up, and now it's a documentary. It's just unbelievable where it's gone. You know, over the last few years. I know. I know. Yeah. It, yeah. So yeah, I'm it's like it's an it's honor like for me. Off my shoulders. <laughs> because I've I've been doing it for like two years and it's like I have been keeping so much like hidden o- tucked away that you know during my phone calls with Tony I've been I would describe things in the in the timeline I would describe different sequences mm-hmm. but then I finally like when Tony's in the theater he's actually watching this stuff I'm like see I told you I told you didn't mm-hmm. I that was that's what I was talking about yeah. So it's just, it's finally it's nice to finally just be able to go. Here it is, world. It's yeah. finally ready. I don't have to keep this away from people. Yeah. Andrew, you made a, a a comparison to the Oscars. Do you think there's a chance this could be up for an Oscar next year at the Academy Awards if it's released this year? Oh gosh, that's uh, mm-hmm. I would love that again. That's a that's a big dream. You know, yeah. I, I'll have it. I love it, and um, I truly, truly, truly believe that we did something different in this type of a genre for yeah. uh, for bodybuilding uh, movies. Um, I don't think I've seen any other documentary quite done quite like the way that we did this documentary. Right. It really is uh, a different way that we approached everything. 
yeah um from you know our interviews from the way that we presented the story to people it's it's a really different experience and i feel like we did something that nobody else has done mm -hmm. in the documentary world for bodybuilding yeah 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 i believe it if it's like the book i believe it's going to be different than anything so but but you don't want this to come out just like a bodybuilder's movie or bodybuilder's no book. yeah this it's more great. than that this is that's for true. the people of the world yeah this yeah. is for that's why i feel like it's different because it's it's very easily and i keep saying this to, to everyone where it's like it's very easy to try to you know that there's already the built-in audience. You know who is going to want to watch this. Um, but it's always the person that doesn't know that they wanted this story. Uh, when we did our test audience, um, we had a very, very diverse uh, crowd of people to actually come in and see, you know, watch the movie. We had people that were young, people that were older, people that were in the industry, people that were parts of different industries, you know, yeah. doctors, lawyers, things like that. And I kept getting the same kind of response back. And it was something along the lines of, you know, you guys did incredible. You know, I'm not into bodybuilding, but I loved watching this and I loved watching Tony's story. Uh, I think, you uh, you know, the audience is going to love this uh, or I think you're the, you know, fitness uh, audience is going to love this. And that's the the one thing that I'm like, great. I know I captured the fitness audience, yeah. but I captured you. So yeah. That's the important part. I captured you, the lawyer that doesn't care about this at all. Yeah. And you loved it. That's what I'm I'm looking at. And so you think people I, like that who had no background or no uh, nothing about bodybuilding had more respect for the sport after they saw the documentary? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I, absolutely. Yes. I think I think it's the very same kind of thing where it's like I didn't know anything about the sport when I went in to make this documentary. Mm -hmm. But after going through the whole journey with Tony, it's like there are so many relatable levels that you can, you, you know, just look at Tony and look at his life and go like, oh, I went through something similar. I went through that or, you know, and yeah. it's it's just it's it's something that kind of sticks with you. It stays with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think even if you didn't go through what Tony went through, it, you could still empathize with it and with the story and and understand all the struggles he went through. And, you know, it's just an amazing story of perseverance and determination and never giving up on yourself and overcoming all these odds from when you were very young, Tony, from when you were a kid, from when you were a baby. Right. I mean, everybody has a story to tell. So, yeah, they're going to find something that they can relate to. So, oh, my God, I went through that. This is happening to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I had a friend who picked up the book. She went halfway through it and she threw it across the room. And I go, why did you do that? She goes, I don't want to go there mm. because it, 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 there was a part of the book that related to her life. Mm -hmm. and she didn't want to open that door. She says, no, I can't. She wow. Yeah. So then I realized, OK, this might help some people now. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's that's even though he's a bodybuilder, I'm not a bodybuilder, I became a bodybuilder. Yeah, this is not a real hardcore life story, you know, from the down south. <laughs> yeah, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, I yeah, want to give it all away, but it's really, it's really deep. Yeah, yeah, like, really like deep. I mentioned, the that first sequence in, in Memphis is very difficult, it's it, it can be very uncomfortable to watch. There's even a one little sequence in that, uh in that section of the movie that is almost like a horror movie quite honestly yeah um but it's it's not you know you know i feel like horror is to be uncomfortable just for uncomfortable sake but mm -hmm. this one is you're uncomfortable but there's there's a reason in and in, in the end that you're gonna you're gonna appreciate yeah 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 and it, yeah, i know your story is much more than bodybuilding tony but it is kind of a it's kind of a positive uh, aspect of what bodybuilding can do for you, how it saved you, you know, how you were going through all these things and you used, you know, the sport of bodybuilding, which is much more than I think a lot of people realize because it requires so much spirit and so much, you know, determination and, and mental strength. Mm -hmm. And you were able to to channel all that into bodybuilding into something positive. Yes, it's, it was a lifesaver for me. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I was having fun, but still, you know, I was 
I was enjoying it every every moment of every moment yeah. of it. So, yeah, it's uh, but you know, a lot of people go through a lot of stuff. I understand that. So yeah. this is why I want everybody to see. It. I just want you to see it because it's so different. I can't it's wait. It's so different. <laughs> I can't wait to There's see it. There's <laughs> nothing like this has ever been done. Trust me. Yeah. So I've, you're I've very, seen a lot. You're very pleased with how it came out. Oh, absolutely. I was yeah. like, oh my God. Thank God yeah. my friend Nita was with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a video of uh, Tony up on stage with me after the premiere of him just, you know, crying in front of the Oh, audience. really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when the, when the movie ended, it's an hour and a half, and the mm -hmm. lights came on, and I stood up. And these two ladies sitting in front of me, they turned around and said, oh, my God, you're here. And then everybody started applauding. The whole, the whole audience started applauding, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my God, what's going on here? <laughs> <I'm shocked. laughs> yeah. It was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're actually here. So then we go on the stage and we talk a little bit. And yeah, yeah. It's a few questions. and Yeah. It's All a, right. Another world, really world, for, a different world for me. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, congratulations, guys, on such a great film. I'm glad you guys won that award, and I'm I'm happy that you're able to come on here and talk about it. I can't wait for it. I love the book, so I can't wait to see the movie. So uh, keep us surprised of uh, what's going on with it, like if it'll be at any more film festivals, or or you know when if you, if and when you do get the uh, the the uh, deal with the streaming service, when it'll be out, and I'll let my listeners know because I can't wait to see it. Oh, absolutely! Thank you so much for having us. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. All the best Thanks. with the movie. Take care.